the question, what are you, followed me around like a bad odor for much of my childhood, which morphed into the more politically correct, so where are you from? At the end of the day, what people want to know is my race. My mom and dad met in Japan during the Korean War. They fell in love after dad got drunk one night. Dad had caused quite a ruckus at a pachinko parlor, knocking over a pachinko machine. He was arrested, and my mom was working at the police station as an interpreter. This is where they fell in love. <laughs> it wasn't easy for my parents. The military had obstacles to prevent marriages between enlisted men and foreign nationals. Intimidation, filling out many forms, undergoing endless interviews, and even medical tests, which all seemed to be what they needed to do for the sole purpose of discouraging mixed marriages. And my parents faced many stares and much hostility when they were together in Japan, which was still a very closed society. But they knew all along that their lives together would eventually be back in the US. My mom was sent stateside to be with my dad's family during her pregnancy with me. I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. But my family moved back to Japan shortly after I was born because dad was stationed at Tachikawa Airfield. On the way back to the airport to catch our flight back to Japan, my family stops for gas. The gas attendant was cleaning the windshield and looked at my parents, then at me in the back seat. The attendant asked, Say, where is that baby from? Did you steal her from the reservation or what? What is she? So it went on from there. I remember as a kid, a kid adults would ask me, what are you? They wanted to know my race, of course. In the early 60s, asking a kid, what are you? Perfectly acceptable. As a kid, I tried to answer as best I could. No guile or, or sarcasm, you're just a kid. After a while, you get tired of the question. No kid wants it pointed out to them that they are different. You wish people would just let it rest because whatever you answer, a short answer isn't enough. The answer Mexican Japanese is never enough. I always had more explaining to do. What kind of food do you eat at home? Is your dad Japanese or is it your mom? Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak Japanese? Mm, I speak a little Spanish and oh, no Japanese. Oh, too bad. Yeah, I get it. I'm a big disappointment. Then I have to explain how my mom didn't speak Spanish and my dad didn't speak Japanese. But they both spoke English, but still, too bad. And then there were all the nods. Yeah, I knew it. I could see the Asian in you. It makes people feel good somehow. People get happy when they peg my race, kind of like pin the tail on the donkey. Do I look more Asian, or is that what people want to see? I begin to wonder, is that somehow more desirable? Where did I fit in? It didn't help that I didn't see anyone who looked like me on TV. Everyone on TV was your basic vanilla, and nothing exciting at all, but they all fit in. Then. Bam! The TV show, The Avengers aired. I found my role model, Mrs. Emma Peel, super spy. Mrs. Peel was white, tall, slim, dressed sexy, had beautiful wavy hair, not the flat Asian stuff on my head, 
and she could kick ass. She was witty with clever comebacks in a British accent. So I made up my mind. I would grow up to be her. I would be Emma Peel. I would be white, tall, with curls in my hair. I would dress sexy, and I would kick ass. Well, it didn't exactly pan out that way. But hey, I made sure I could kick some ass. It explains my lifelong love for boxing, Krav Maga, and various martial arts. I carried that little bit of confidence in me that yes, if I had to, I could kick some ass. But I sure, I was sure I was not good looking at all. This longing to fit in wishing maybe I could pass at someone who didn't bring up the question, what are you? I lacked confidence. I had plenty of self-loathing, explaining my desire for wavy hair, or what I call Caucasian hair. I made sure my hair was properly curled for every school photo. Maybe I couldn't change my height, my skin color, or the shape of my eyes, but my hair, there was something I could work with. So I would always perm my hair. I would endlessly burn my hair to achieve that perfect wavy hair. For much of my life, my hair was sizzled and damaged. No matter what I did, though, curl my hair, shrink back into the shadows as a shy, quiet person, People would stop and question what I was or where I was from, pointing out to me again and again that I just didn't fit in. I could be walking down the street, and a random person would start talking to me in Tagalog. <laughs> oh, oh, gee, I don't speak Tagalog. I'm not a Filipina. Oh, yeah, I didn't think so. It's your nose. So. So what are you, Hawaiian? Guess what's going on in my head? Well, why the hell were you trying to speak to me in Tagalog if you knew? <laughs> so you're Inuit, right? Inuit, like, like an Eskimo? You, no, I'm not Inuit. You sure? You look just like my aunt. You're sure you're not Inuit? As if. My racial identity was a mystery to me. So many Native Americans start speaking to me in their language, but at the end of the day, they always ask me, so what are you? By the time I was a teenager, I developed a big chip on my shoulder. When people asked me where I was from to mess with them, I would say, well, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs> then they would fidget a bit, <laughs> Re regroup. Well now, where is your family from? You know, your people. And I'd smile. Oh yeah, my people. Well, they're all from Corpus Christi, Texas too. It was easy and enjoyable to make fee people feel as uncomfortable as I did. And later, so many men seemed to be fascinated with my exotic looks. Not beautiful, but exotic. Men have told me my exotic looks are a turn on, or that my soft Asian skin turns them on. I have been called a pretty Chinese doll more than once. This I do not take as a compliment. It is irritating. It's creepy. I have actually had boyfriends break up with me because I didn't act Asian. <sighs> well, you're not very quiet. You're kind of scary and intimidating with all that boxing stuff. Is that code for you have an opinion? 
you're not going to be subservient? That I could kick your ass? What? Why would I act Asian, whatever that means? I was brought up here in California. I had no Asian relatives living near me except for my mom. My closest relatives, my large extended family, all Tejanos, the food, the culture I was surrounded by, clearly not Asian or Inuit or whatever folks imagine me to be. Believe it or not, I still run into people. I could be talking for, to a person for hours, then suddenly they ask me, so where are you from? I imagine that the burning question of my race has been on their minds. But I don't take it as a reflection on me anymore. It's a reflection on them. Also, as tired as I am of explaining myself, I try to be a little more forgiving. Perhaps this boob likes me and just is trying to get to know more about me, just doesn't know how to go about it. But I think things are changing. I look around and I see more beautiful people of every shade, shape, and ethnicity. They seem more comfortable in their own skin. Also, I have changed. I am not that insecure, self-loathing young lady anymore. I've been through a lot, and I've accomplished a lot. I earned scholarships, first in my family to earn a college degree. I'm retired from a successful career. I married the love of my life, my dearest John. He died, and I survived it. And I'm not just surviving, I'm thriving. I look back at this photo of myself, and this is pre-Photoshop, pre-digital cameras. And I say, hey, I wasn't bad looking at all. I am continuing to learn. I am doing new things I never thought I would do dancing and writing, modeling for photos whenever I can, and now I'm speaking in front of you. <laughs> sure, I feel like I'm aging pretty fast, but I'm fighting it tooth and nail. But let me tell you, I am way more forgiving about my looks. I even catch myself saying, hey, you don't look so bad for your age. <laughs> it must be this Asian skin. <laughs> I used to be camera shy. Now I have plenty of photographer friends that need a model from time to time. And I am always volunteering. I have my photos taken whenever I can something I would never have done even as late as my 40s. I get my makeup and hair done by makeup artists and hairstylists. Still, hairstylists want to curl my hair every time. I'm beginning to accept myself, though, my appearance as uniquely beautiful. I am fitting into a society that is looking much more diverse. But sadly, as I have been gaining confidence and acceptance, I started hearing about attacks on Asians. Fear, anxiety, anger directed against Asians is on a sharp rise. My last modeling favor for my friend was in 2021. I'm in the middle of having my makeup and hair done. My stepmom calls me in a panic. Lizzie, be careful, I love you. A man killed eight Asian ladies. I'm scared, don't go out. I was already sick of hearing about all this crazy shit going on. 
Grown men sucker punching Asian senior citizen? What the fuck, cowards? I stopped. I checked the news on my phone. And sure enough, some crazy ass white racist motherfucker went out and killed eight Asian ladies. I feel this kind of violence against women is all too common, especially Asian women. They are often fetishized, not seen as human, but rather objects. I instantly thought back to the times I was called Chinese doll, and it feels so creepy. My stomach turns. Stop. I don't want my hair curled. Make it look as straight as possible, as Asian as possible, I told the hairstylist. But honey, it looks so much nicer. Fuck it. <laughs> Some spineless piece of shit wants me to be afraid, to make me hate myself. I'm not going back there. I am strong beautiful, and I could still kick some ass. I ain't afraid of nobody, and I love me. To the core, I love me. I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> so here I am, and I say to you, and you, and you, and you, to everyone, love yourself. Don't wait. You are like me, and I am like you, unique and beautiful. And if you want to know where I'm from, I was born in Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs>